Even with this slightly letdown of a final episode, and by all means, it was slightly off the pace. It's still the best Disney Plus show to date. People will disagree, people can have different opinions, we've said it many times, but I think story-wise, cohesively, coherently, it is the best told story out of all the animated, live-action Disney Plus shows so far. Yeah, it is. And I think we're going to be considered the weird ones mm -hmm. here. This is going to be a controversial opinion, mm. because I feel like people haven't been enjoying Hawkeye. But as a whole story for the characters, the beats, the introduction of the future of the MCU, mm -hmm. It's done a really, really stellar job. The thing is, it doesn't really hold a candle or a flame to Daredevil, no. Luke Cage season one, but does it need to? Those two shows were really, really good. And yeah. I don't think we can expect that type of iconic TV every single time. But I think Hawkeye was the closest to that out of all the shows they've made so far. I do like the way this ended overall. Mm -hmm. It left a sweet taste in my mouth. And then a bitter taste. And then another bitter taste. And then a sweet taste. And then a bitter taste again. Hey, you no know, render of the comic again! Nonsense. Yes, and right now we're giving our season finale review of Hawkeye. And while this episode didn't really live up to the entire season, it was still good. Probably my favourite finale episode other than the finale of Loki. I think that one pips it just because of what it means and the ramifications for the MCU. But as a show, it was the best characterizations were the best and I think that the one thing that I really hate and I'm gonna throw this off the bat right from the start Kingpin yeah all right his introduction was great it was menacing intimidating you felt like it could have been a version of the Kingpin from Daredevil yeah. and then they just went balls to the wall weird extra extra sauce extra spice, and I'm not sure I wanted it. When we found out that Vincent D'Onofrio was gonna be in this show mm -hmm. as Wilson Fisk, it was a, oh shit. Yeah. This is the villain we've been waiting mm -hmm. for, because there wasn't a real clear villain in this show before that. But the actual situations surrounding him in this episode made him seem a little bit of a bitch. Yeah, they bitched him. Even though they made him super strong. Yeah, he was ripping off car doors. And potentially bulletproof and explosion proof. Yeah. Which I is there in the comics. He has been from time to time, not just a big human being, but also a bit super powered. Okay. So you can go there with it, but that's not what he was in Daredevil, which is fine because this is a different iteration of the character. But by the end of the episode, he's wearing Hawaiian shirts. He's looking a bit janky and then He's kind of losing to Kate Bishop in a fight. No, that's not what you do. You have it be a fairly equal fight and then Kingpin wins with some underhanded tactics. Yeah. That's what you should do. Even if he was just a human, yeah. that's what you should do. And then at the end of the episode, he gets away and then he gets killed by Maya. Yeah. Why? I really don't. He's killed. I, I don't understand why they introduced such a big character who was so highly anticipated in the final episode and then said, sorry, you don't get any more of him. We're just deading you right now. I don't get it. Now, the option is she didn't actually kill him. She may have shot him in the shoulder, shot him... Well, I mean, anywhere else, you're probably going to get killed. So it's a tough one. Well, maybe it says she shot him in the head, but, like, he doesn't kill him. Maybe he's blinded in one eye. You shoot someone through I... the face, they're generally going to die. Malala Yousefi was the oh my exception. God. You're right, you're right. There are chances. I'm just saying this because I want Wilson Fisk as a character to remain in the MCU. I want but do I want a blind Wilson Fisk? Blind in one eye, maybe. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe he's going to have a Well, he's going to be star. facing off against Daredevil. Daredevil is blind himself. So maybe this is evening the playing field in some way. <sighs> Look, I, what I want to say about his fight scene with Kate is that he wasn't actually trying to hurt Kate. He was just trying to get her out of the way. He Seemingly. repeatedly was just throwing her across yeah. the scene. And she obviously was not going to take no for an answer uh -huh. because he was going to kill her mum. Yeah. So I think that's one of the reasons why she won. But it just didn't sit right with me. The whole character they gave him, mm -hmm. it was Vincent D'Onofrio's Wilson Fist, yeah. but the situations they put him in were almost comical. But I think that's what they're going for. It's not as dark as those MCU Netflix shows. It's lighter, it's funnier, it's more jovial, and it's Christmas. So I think they played into that more so than they would have if it wasn't set at Christmas. 
But even then, I think the episode overall wasn't as good as one, two, three, and four. Five was okay, but I think I preferred this one. Yelena was better in this one. Oh, yeah. I liked her characterization more. She had a interesting moment with Clint where she understood what happened on Vormir, and I think she came to terms with it and knew that he wasn't lying in the end, yeah. and that Natasha did sacrifice herself to save the universe. For Clint as well, this mm. was a closure moment for him yeah. to fully accept that he misses his best friend and she's not gonna come back. But maybe there's the potential for a sibling-esque relationship to transpire between Clint and Yelena yeah. because of the love they both shared for Natasha. Mm. I want to see what's going to happen with her character because does this mean she's a good guy? No. Nah. Does it mean that she's still a bad guy? But like, she clearly has morals because she didn't want to hurt Kate. Yeah. Because she's a kid. She sees mm -hmm. her as a child mm -hmm. potentially fighting someone else's battles, mm -hmm. right? I want to see what they're going to do with her because yeah. this episode really made me like her a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I liked her in Black Widow, but I think it was overplayed. People were hyping her up so much and I didn't really get it. I think this is her best performance to date and I think it's the best written version of her so far. So all that stuff was tied up in a bow pretty well. Jack as well. Oh! Jack was the standout of this episode. Jack. Wasn't he? Honestly, he kind of stole my heart a bit. He swooped in with his sword, yeah. you know, saving Kate, calling her sweetie. It was really, <laughs> really sweet. It was stepdad vibes, wasn't it? But like in the best Good way. Good stepdad vibes. The action scenes as well in this episode were very well done. The most MCU heavy to date. I think the tree situation with him being stuck in the tree was a bit far. It kind of made him look like an idiot. Clint I'm talking about here. And I didn't really love that. But other than that, I think every other aspect of the action was very well done. It brought you in. It made you feel like there was something big yet insular going on at the same time. While other episodes have made it feel specifically small for the reason of the storytelling. This one felt like an in-between. The Yelena and Kate fight scene mm. across this whole floor mm. was really well done and directed. And the feeling of it was so out there because it was clear that... Kate was trying her best, and Yelena clearly didn't want to hurt Kate, yeah. but they were going against each other, and then they were complimenting each other. It's a very odd relationship. It's very weird, but if this is something they want to play into in the future, then I see why they've done it with a Young Avengers, another Avengers team, a Dark Avengers team, whatever it might be. You can see the seeds for that being planted with the relationship that they're building with the two of them. And then at the end of the show, because Kingpin did get deaded potentially, and Maya did indeed dead him, I don't know how you can sell that show now. I thought there was a chance once we started this show that you could make a show with her. I don't know if you can now. I just didn't buy her. I didn't think she was that charismatic. I didn't really understand the character that much. There was motivation there from her, but it was very convoluted story-wise. And I think when you look at Jeremy Renner, people like him, some people don't. He has charisma. There is charm to him watching him perform. Haley Steinfeld has the same thing. Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio has the same thing as well as Yelena. So they all have this specific spice to them which makes them watchable. Even Kazi had it. Yeah, Kazi had it, but with Maya, something was just a little bit off. And it's not the fact that she was using sign language. No, not at all. That is very full as a form of communication. I actually really liked it when Kingpin was using it, yep. Clint was using it with her, mm -hmm. and Kazi was using it. I think it added to everyone's character. Yeah, it really showed the yeah. care that they're having with her. Yeah. But her as a hero, mm. I don't really believe it. It's going to be something they're going to have to work on for a her lot, individual story. Especially when you consider if Vincent D'Onofrio is dead as Wilson Fisk, you don't have a Wilson Fisk overarching character in the background looming. Yeah. He's gone. Unless she's just going to be a vigilante, right? And it's going to be that type of story. Her doing things for the betterment of people, but maybe not in the best ways. Mm -hmm. So if that's it. the cell, then you can get behind that. But I think story-wise, they didn't do enough in this show to make me care about her story. Whereas I really cared about Kate's story and Yelena's story and Clint's story. It's just very odd how certain little moments can change the way you view a character. And I don't think they did justice to her character throughout this show, considering how well they characterized so many other people in the show. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I would even say with Kazi's death, mm. they were really trying to pull something to make you feel I didn't really feel much. And I didn't mind Kazi as a character. He was kind of see-through. Yeah. But that moment between the two of them, flat, compared to the Yelena and Clint scene where they mm -hmm. were both really giving it, especially because they were back to back, Yeah. it felt a bit off. The costumes look good though. I think Kate's one looked a lot better than Clint's. Yeah. Clint's one looked a bit cheap, to be honest. It looked, yeah. It wasn't fitting properly in certain scenes, whereas Kate's looked really good, but you could have made his look just a little better. Yeah, he looked like he kind of turned up late. <laughs> and didn't get his fitting right. Uh -huh. And they were like, we'll just throw these things on. And then the LARPers came in, did the job, 
were in superior costumes, basically Avengers now as well. Yeah, they said it. The word is just getting sullied. <laughs> yeah. I'm an Avenger, <laughs> you know, helping out an Avengers mission, so I should be involved as well, right? Right. right? I have to say, you're right. You're right. The watch did indeed belong to Clint's wife. Yes. She yes. was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Something to be noted, though, is that there was a number 19 on the back of the watch. Now, I looked it up. Oh. 19, Agent 19, uh -huh. is a specific agent because they never do these types of things for no reason. It's a character called Mockingbird. Now, Mockingbird is actually a pretty... She's an Avenger. She's an Avenger. This is big stuff. I didn't exactly know what her number was because I just referred to her as Mockingbird because she was actually also in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show but played by Adriana Palicki, a different, different actress. So they've basically thrown away the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Definitely not canon, none of that stuff because she is Agent 19. So what does Agent 19 do? She throws shit about. Like she's an agent. She's a bit like Hawkeye. She's a super spy. She has a black outfit with some white stuff. That matches well with Clint. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be able to fly or shoot laser uh -huh. beams to be a hero. Yeah. I like it. They met on the job. It's kind of a an Avengers love story. I guess so. They can definitely keep the kids safe then. That's yeah. something that's necessary in a family like that. Something else happened and that was Kate joined the family. It was expected because her mother did get put away by her. By her. Yeah, which is fine because she did something wrong. It didn't really prove the mum's point though, which is you can't really handle the world because I'm not sure she can. Yeah, I feel like at the beginning of the series, it was, Kate, you can't keep destroying bell towers. Mm -hmm. I can't keep writing checks yeah. to fix your problems. Yeah. By the end of the show, we're made to believe that Kate can handle the world mm -hmm. because now she also has Hawkeye yeah. and these skills she's acquired mm -hmm. and the LARPA friends. But the end point with the dog and Kate walking into the family farm, it was sweet. It was It cute. was sweet. I kind of wanted Jack to be there as well and for him to be like, Ugh, what is this? That would have been funny to that me. That would have actually. Plus it would have just made the family bigger and included more of her side and her story in the future because I'm not sure if Jack is actually going to come back. I kind of He might not, you know? Back. I do. There's something... He's a buffoon, okay? Yeah. Like, we can't pretend. He's an idiot. But in, like, the most likeable way. He has no bad intentions. Mm -hmm. He's just a nice guy and there aren't enough of those shown in these shows no there's not there's not something that did surprise me was by the end of the show there wasn't a zinger saying hawkeye will return in season two because no. they did that for loki they didn't do it for one division they didn't do it for falcon and the Winter soldier but they did say falcon and the Winter soldier will return right yeah i don't know if they're not gonna do a season two or if they're gonna very quickly roll her into the films hey maybe in a daredevil she might show up something Ooh. like that i was annoyed slightly that charlie cox didn't show up in this show yeah. like that could have been a great moment. I'm not even joking. I can see it now. Why at the end when Wilson Fisk was getting away, wasn't it Daredevil in costume and that's how it just ended? That would have been that, enough. That would have been oh. so much. I just thought that. that's so much better. The thing is, you wouldn't have even you needed You need nothing else. All you needed was just the back shot of him yep. and then Wilson Fisk in the background. That's all you would have needed. You didn't oh need Charlie God. Cox. Look, they wanted it for Maya's story, of course. But it didn't help the story. I, I know. Oh, that's such a bad idea. As in, our idea was better for once then this was a bad idea. For what? Yeah, I, well, I can't, I can't, right. like, we can't big ourselves yeah, up too like much, that. you know? Right. We haven't done anything yet. Yeah, yeah. One day. One day. One day. enough, guys. But, nah, that's, oh, I'm just seeing it. I can see him jumping off the building and being in a silhouette in the darkness and just walking out. And then you get a back shot and Vincent D'Onofrio is looking shook. Oh, I've oh. just been blown up. I can't handle this now. Yeah, this blow up. <laughs> should have died, sorry. He, like, was thrown across the room, but at the time I was like, no, he is dead because these other arrows were uh -huh. engulfing people's legs and ice. You're not going to have a leg frostbite. They were Making thrown. people fly in the it's, air. Yeah. It's, you have to think to yourself, they're, they're killing a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah, Bayan actually said Kate Bishop's kill count. Pretty high. It's really. higher than a lot of other Avengers. Yeah. She has more kills than Ant-Man for sure. It's kind of crazy though because there was this comedic tone to it. So you're not meant to think about it. But Like when ooh. she made the van small. There was that question, it was very well brought up by Clint. I don't know how they get out of that, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure I have to call Scott and ask him how to fix this. And then the owl just comes and picks him up and flies away. They just got eaten by an owl! Yeah, uh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. But then there were other moments which really put you in the world and made you believe an unbelievable situation. Like when the LARPers came out in their gear saying, we're gonna do this. 
Clint's just sitting in the tree like, oh, we're all gonna die, this is it. I'm really glad they put that in writing-wise. Yeah. What do they think they're gonna do? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad the Avenger was like, what do they think they're gonna do? Yeah. So it was a fun show. Not the best thing I've ever seen, but definitely something that I would maybe watch again, which I can't say for any of the other MCU shows. So at least there's that. I would consider watching this one again. Maybe bust it on next Christmas, honestly. Hey, maybe bust it on in a week's time. Oh. You know, there might be other shit going on. Us being stuck at home properly. Oh, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> you never know. Hopefully not, but... <laughs> The world is the world. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there if you didn't. If you didn't, Daredevil himself gotta come after you. You don't want that, do they want no. that? You really don't, so just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been the of the comic. I've been on Sensei. She's been on Sensei. You've been Graham. We'll see you next time. That's tomorrow. If you don't know, make a video every single day. Been doing it every day for over 1,000 days now. We ain't stopping till we get to 10,000 subscribers. So do subscribe. Pop back again tomorrow for some more quality. Shitsy content, because we're hashtag never not here, just how it goes. Also, bring that bequas, bequas means nonsense in Punjabi. We also bring that. Bring a lot. Bring a little, do a lot, do a little, but we do indeed bring the quality shitty content on a daily basis. So, see you tomorrow. More of the same, slightly different, but essentially the very same. Once more, see you then. Skadoosh.